Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. The Church of Nice and its leaders should be terrified of facing our blessed Lord when they die. This insanity of even suggesting that people in a state of mortal sin should be admitted to reception of Holy Communion is nothing short of diabolical. Those who profess this sacrilege and try to advance it are stoking the fires of their own damnation and they need to be confronted and denounced as the children of the devil that they are. Those clerics and bishops who sit back and say nothing about it will also have a share in the divine retribution. No wonder so few of these men ever mention hell or talk about it as a place no one really goes. They better hope they're right, which they aren't. Back in the 1970s, an expression started getting bandied about the Church of Nice circles that we should see the Holy Eucharist as bread for the journey. Isn't that all sweet and poetic? And it's true, as long as it's understood correctly. But as usual, once a true statement is processed through the Church of Nice's distorter machine, it comes out the other end as damnable. The journey is striving for holiness, and as faithful Catholics know, that's an extremely difficult task. It takes a lifetime. As a consequence, our blessed Lord has given us himself physically as continual nourishment for our weary selves because we need him. But this presupposes that a person is actually proceeding on the path, making an actual journey. Today, Uncatholic Catholic leaders have portrayed the idea of the path or the journey as nothing more than just being alive. They speak as though just breathing and having a pulse constitutes being on the journey. Wrong, wrong. This stupidity completely overlooks the reality that corpses don't walk. Someone who is dead cannot be on a journey or a path to anything. A person in a state of mortal sin is dead, hence the word mortal, morte, meaning dead. A soul in mortal sin is a fetid graveyard full of decomposing corpses and ruled by demons. Our Lord could never be presented to such a situation. Yet he is, time and time again, betrayed to demons, just as Judas betrayed him to demons. A corpse cannot eat. It cannot be changed from its condition of being dead to being alive because food is introduced to it. It does not have the ability or the capacity to eat or to be nourished. Consequently, trying to speak as though the Eucharist is bread for the journey of one spiritually dead is absurd, not to mention sacrilegious, especially sacrilegious. Being on the journey means a soul is in a state of sanctifying grace, moving along the path toward holiness and in need of nourishment, which Holy Communion provides for him. St. Thomas Aquinas makes the very straightforward point that for a soul in the state of grace, the bread of life strengthens him, but for a soul in mortal sin, the Eucharist brings death to that soul, eternal death. Quote, the good receive him, the bad receive him, but with what unequal consequences of life or death. It is death to the unworthy, life to the worthy. Behold then of a like reception, how unlike may be the result. Same Eucharist, same real presence, but completely polar opposite results based on the condition, the spiritual condition of the receiver. You are damning yourself if you receive Holy Communion in a state of mortal sin. Have you no fear of God? For a member of the hierarchy or a priest to knowingly deliver Jesus Christ into a spiritual corpse owing to mortal sin, or to advocate for it, or to remain silent about it, is a sacrilege of the gravest sort. Bishops, priests, are you out of your minds? Do you not realize what you are advocating for or remaining silent about? These men are in a state of spiritual death themselves, and for the good of souls, they must be called out and opposed. They are trying to regularize sacrilege because they do not believe the Catholic faith, 
They do not believe in the real presence and they do not believe in hell. See that you are not taken in by all this happy talk about meeting people where they are and creating a path to reconciliation. The only reconciliation available is the one which the Son of God himself personally established, sacramental confession and absolution, which requires deep sorrow for your sins and a resolve to abandon that sin in the future. That is being resurrected and coming back onto the path and resuming the journey. Corpses don't walk. They rot and they stink and no amount of food brings them back to life. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.